So I'm going to be charging with my field piece meter here. Switch into the field piece meter here. Charge this puppy up. Got both of our gauges turned off. We hit up the low side line here. side line. Good there for the line. And now the low side line will be hooking up to our refrigerant can up top. our can of refrigerant up top. Purge the line down below. Circle. Pudge. Now we're ready to turn it on. Hold it down for a second. Turn it on here. And now we've got our K-type clamps on each side, so we'll plug those in. T1 for our low side, T2 for our high side. High side we'll be clamping on to the high side down lower. And the low side we'll clamp on down lower. I also have my field piece meter here, temperature probe. A little bit overkill. To have two of them going, but I'll put this up right behind it. Okay, now this will start to show our measurements here, and we can cycle through the different settings. Now, I already know the system was low on refrigerant, fixed my leak on the low side Schrader valve, located it, fixed it. Now, I need to charge up the system, letting the Freon into the system. You can hear how low it is, even without the unit turned on. And you can hear the refrigerant going into the system. So when it's that low, I'm gonna go ahead and, and fire up the system. It'll start to draw the Freon in right away. It'll charge it a lot faster. Here's my disconnect. Plug it in. And let's get charging. Okay. So here it goes. We can cycle through our different settings here. So this would be kind of equivalent to our green dial for our 22. This would be our green dial on the high side for our 22. It's about 108 degrees outside today, so it's gonna take it to about 135 to be right there. And ideally, right here, we're going to want to show about 40 to 45. You know, 40 plus or minus 5 degrees is uh, our rule of thumb. And on the high side, ambient plus 30 is our rule of thumb. So we're climbing a little bit there as it takes the refrigerant. Here on our field piece meter, we can measure the temperature of the suction line, showing about 60.8, you can see this one's showing about 
could be the, just the position. This one's in front of the other one. So, they're pretty close, in the way. Anyway, this one was pretty low on Freon, but I can start to feel with my wrist here, um, the suction line. It should flash nice and chilly. You know, at the suction, at the uh, evaporator coil, we want it to be about 40 degrees. And so, super heat would be about 15 degrees difference in temperature. So, down here, we'd want this to be about 55 degrees. You know, plus or minus five degrees for our super heat. So we're a ways from there. It's gonna take a little while. Get this puppy right. You see we're pretty close on our temperature dial. It's within a degree. 1.3 degrees difference. That's pretty good. Start showing our indoor wet bulb. I haven't taken an outdoor dry bulb temperature, but I know it's about 108 degrees on like the living thermometer out here. It's, it's hot, let me tell you that much. So cycle through. Now we're at 10.1 super heat. Dropping a little bit there and adjusting. But really, we're looking for, you know, 8 to 16, 8 to 15 degrees super heat. Same on sub -tool, so we got a ways to go. Although my left side line is feeling nice and chilly, that's a good sign. I got some ice on the compressor here, help it charge faster, get things going sooner. That's pretty nice. Starting to feel much better already. So we're showing four degrees, super heat. Pretty good. I'll probably try to manually set that outdoor dry bulb. So let's see, move it over to Yeah. Outdoor dry bulb. There we go. That's more like it. 115? Yeah. It might be a tiny bit less than that, but that's that's closer to where we're at at any way any rate. Okay. So super heat, we're climbing a little bit. We just need to get to between eight and 15. So cool, about the same. So, getting there. Drink a little cold water. Yeah, it takes some precautionary measures out here in the desert. It's plenty hot. Sometimes I'll even just take a water bottle and stick that on my neck. Got a nice cold water bottle. It helps make you feel the temperatures drop a little bit. You need some endurance out here. I'll tell you what, it's pretty hot. I'm gonna dump some cold water on the compressor too to help speed things up. Here 
on my field piece meter, measuring the suction line temperature, we're showing 57. That's pretty good. So for 40 at our evaporator, we've got about 16, 7 degrees, 17 degrees superheat. We're getting close to where we want to be. Showing 8 degrees superheat here. This is good. that suction line to feel nice and chilly and it is feeling nice and chilly you can always avoid touching the liquid line inside there next to the compressor that sucker will tattoo you like nobody's business it's pretty hot maybe it is somebody's business like the doctor or something but you don't want to get that kind of tattoo there's no fun It won't look that great either. So I'd just like to see my sub pool come up a little bit higher. But we're, for a capillary tube system, we're charging towards, according to uh, Super heat anyway, so sub cool is not as much a factor. Um, ambient plus 30, we're there, so that's good. Ah, actually, we're not there. We're at 56.4 here. Got a washing machine, not draining. Probably just a lid switch, but have to get to that after this. But uh, anyway, um, showing 78.8 pressure, which is right past the 40. So we're, we're ideal there. 40 plus or minus five degrees. We're in good right there. On the high side, we're showing 257.2. So I'd like to see that be a little bit higher. But we're at our eight degrees, nine degrees sub cool. We're pretty good there. And just feeling the, the line, we're nice and cold. We're good there. So all around, it's a judgment call on your particular systems, learning your particular systems. This one's nice and cool. 9.5 super heat, that's beautiful. We're good, eight to 16, we're good for, for super heat. bit more and then call it quits so, you know again I'd like to see our sub pool be a little bit higher so we'll raise that up a little bit and then get off of this roof it's bloody hot
meter here, show a 54. That's beautiful. Perfect for super heat. Go ahead and turn this off. We're gonna call that good. We've reached our target super heat. We need even 15 degrees. We're good. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and shut my freon down. get that far. What we can do is drag our refrigerant that's left in our red high side line over into our suction line. Now we'll disconnect the high side line. Wow. And that's why we want to use quick connects. <laughs> See how quickly it cut off the refrigerant flow right here. So it cuts things off. Now we can bleed the leftover refrigerant from the high side into the low side. We turned our tank off up top. Now we're just gonna open the, the high side. We can open the high side all the way. And you can kind of do this either way, but anyway, I'm opening the high side all the way. And then on the low side, we're just gonna open the low side a little bit and crack it over and pull all that Freon that's left in the hose from the high side. Just little by little by letting it, letting it go over into the low side. Disconnect the low side line. Again, we'll listen for any leaks. Get our trader valve caps going on. That's a good idea to use new ones. Okay, each time you really open these up for the season, or if it's been a while, the old ones are looking old. You always want to make sure the O-rings inside these little caps it kind of acts like a second gate and it's a dust cap. And you can just hand tighten these on. If you need to go tighter than that, only a quarter turn past, past tight. You don't want to mushroom the ends of your Schrader ports because then you have a hard time getting the Schrader valve out if you needed to replace it. Anyway, we're good to go there. Units all charged, nice and chilly. One AC, good to go. Just gotta bag everything up here, get it off the roof, get back to nice and chilly myself. Oh wait, I gotta go fix a washing machine. It's not draining. Ha, get that going. No biggie. Okay, so now we got everything get disconnected. Just wanna release all the refrigerant from the lines. Avoid trapping anything, leaving anything trapped in the lines. We're all set there. I can finish, finish bagging everything up. Here we go.